call to order the Utilities Committee meeting for Monday, March 24th. If it would, everyone please rise for the invocation of the pledge. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the kind change in the weather. We ask that you keep everybody safe and since you perish. Lord, on this day we ask for a special blessing on the Marshall family for the loss of past parish president Harold Martinez. I mean, Harold Marshall, excuse me. Lord, please, please take care of his family. See them through this. He lost a good man. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Randy. Uh, roll call. Uh, everyone present, Madam Secretary, with the exception of Councilman Turner. Uh, no chairs additions tonight. Uh, item number four, public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda item, come in signing with the Secretary. We'll be given three minutes to speak when that item is on the agenda. Uh, item number five, a motion to approve the minutes from the February 5th meeting. So moved. Sorry. Motion by Councilman Joseph. Second. Second by Councilman Satterley. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. We'll have an update on the Highway 73 and 42 projects, Mr. Petty. Okay, so on Highway 73, that project is moving forward. We encountered a, a few slight issues with uh, with some testing. Those, those issues are being uh, taken care of and those will be retested. Uh, the project actually ran into a bit of a conflict uh, around the Seven Oaks subdivision area with a gas line. So currently, right now, the, the laying of the sewer line has, has halted in order to um, kind of clarify that, uh, that conflict and, and deal with a solution for that. However, they've been moving forward with uh, the installation of some of the box culverts that's involved with the project. And so um, DOT has um, moved the anticipated completion date on that project back to October 31st of this year. Uh, and um, indicating that the project is 52% complete. Uh, on LA-42, that, uh, that project um, was awarded uh, back uh, uh, several weeks ago. Uh, Wharton Smith will be the contractor on that. We've, we've been in discussions right now with them, uh, you know, clearing up some, some RFIs, uh, just kind of some general stuff as far as uh, a little bit more information in regard to the specs and drawings. Um, the completion date on that project is right now scheduled for December 10th of this year. Uh, however, that, that will more than likely move back a little bit. Um, and so uh, right now they're in kind of the assembly phase or mobilization phase on that project. Uh, both projects in regard to the treatment plants, uh, we've been in uh, discussions with a, a, a local private wastewater treatment provider and we're, we're working out temporary solutions for both of those projects. Okay. Mr. Dawson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, just to add something very quickly. On the Highway 73 project, I mean, the, the issues that have been found were due to our inspectors being out there looking very closely as things um, um, progress on the project. They have done a, done a very good job of uh, making sure that the specifications are followed. Any testing that proves to be insufficient, they uh, make sure that there are corrections made. So I think for the long run, uh, we'll have a better project and to ensure there are no issues once the actual road construction starts and then the entire system is turned over to us. So our inspection department has done a great job of um, looking into those issues. All right. Kudos to them. Any uh, questions or comments? For okay, hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to item number seven, discussion of Lemon Lemondale LCDBG state grant for sewage. Councilman Joseph, Ms. Martha Collins. Yes, Ms. Moss. President Martinez asked me to come before you to kind of touch base on the, the old project and see what we're going to do with it. So what I thought I'd do is just recap where we were and where we are today. Um, the original LCDBG block grant was issued in 2006-2007. It was for $719,000, of which $600,000 was grant, and the parish was putting up 100 and 
19000 and that was for the engineering and for the administration of doing the application. Uh, we went through the process, got the everything ready to bid. We bid it out in July of 2008, and it came in at $1.4 million for $1,423,090. So what we did is, um, in the recommendation of our engineer, which was, I think, Mr. Turner, Bob was working with us on that at that time. We decided to wait a while, and we went back out for a bid. But the second time, we did that January 7, 2009. Unfortunately, it came in higher. It was 1575295 So... When it came in over bid, we only had the 600000 We uh, were asked to see if we could explore to see if we could find any additional money that would help offset the difference in what we had and what we were, didn't have for available funds. We actually talked to the uh, LDEQ. They had a state revolving loan fund that we were asking them to see if they would give us a grant rather than a alone. We put in a pre-application hoping that there would be some justification to allow us to move into that. They had done that in the past, so we thought we'd give it a shot. They didn't make it. We went uh, also looking at USDA. Now, USDA, uh, for this area, will allow for you to have funds, but the process was six to eight months to be able to do all the preliminary, all the application with them, and then we still wouldn't know if we got the funds or not. So when we presented that, they said, well, this is, you know, we're going to have to try something else. We did look at the parish's budget. I think that was explored. Uh, there was no funds there that we could come up with that amount. It's over a million. So uh, we were notified by uh, Carol Newton with the LCDBG and said, you know, you got to tell us what you're going to do with this. And we said, well, we were going out for bid, but unfortunately, the second time we came in over bid again. So they wrote us a letter and asked us to uh, state that basically we'd have to terminate our contract. And we had not spent, the money we spent was for the engineering and then actually the administration for filling out the application. There were the 600000 that was allocated. We didn't touch it. We didn't receive it here, so there was no money spent on the grant of these funds. So we, at that time, we were looking back, and uh, uh, Councilman Joseph and we were talking about, well, is this something that we could bring back up again? And um, I said, well, let me do some checking. And so in April of 2013, we went back, pulled our files out, found out what we, where we left off, and made a visit to PEC, who was the engineer of record at the time, to give us an update and see what it would cost if we brought the project back. And at that time, he sent us a letter, and he said that basically... For no improvements, the design as is, no admin fees, no land acquisition, it would cost about 1.7, almost $1.8 million for us to do that. Of that, you still had uh, some fees to update the design, basically to re-advertise, get the permits again. So you're looking at 36000 roughly, and then to do inspections is 24000 So we're looking at another 60000 to make the project totally whole. So when I put that down, the estimated cost was $1,000,008. 8. We added, if we did administration, a consultant, I wanted to put that in there, and if we did go through the, the parish, 
we wanted to have that figure in there just for good, being able to do a good budget. So we were at a million eight hundred and forty. The eligible amount for this grant today is eight hundred thousand only. So we needed a million forty to make it whole. Now it, that is just to do the Lemon Center, the Lemonville area. There was also talk to take it from this, from the uh, run a line to the jail, which is not included in this. So we're looking at if we if we have sixty thousand to design it and add some just just the design, not the construction. We're probably looking. I just could have estimate of 150, so just for talking points. That is not official. It's just if I had 60, kind of doubled it to see. So we're basically looking at 800,000 in a grant, and we need almost a million 200,000 to try and get this put back together. Uh, we can apply again. The funding date is to reapply for 2015. We'll be in November of 2015 with the monies coming out in 2016. So that does give us time to uh, start looking at if, where we're going to get the money from. Or do we want to try and go a different route? And that is only at the direction of President Martinez. He's got to tell me to go start this and redo it, and let's see where we can go with it. Our budget has to be intact if we go this, because we've already been here once and didn't have the funds. Uh, I would not want us to go back to the state, get a grant, and then not fulfill the the project. So we're here to, I mean, I'm here to do anything that we can to assist, but we got to have that money, and we got to have the approval for us to move. Councilman Pua. Martha, on this, mm -hmm. uh, you said that uh, the, the grant to possibly go forward would be 800000 Is the there stipulations on that, on the use of that? Uh, it's for sewer. The, you can use it for land for acquisition, or just not? Yeah, strictly for the laying the lines and stuff. I mean, there strictly are different classifications. So if we say we want to run lines and we do this, well, then it's in this type of classification. If you're going to do a, the treatment center and, and run lines, then there's a, a give and take about which section you're in. You're still only at 800000 Right. Understand it. And so I think the land, I, I, uh, if I remember, I think there was not a right away issue that we would have to have purchase right, right away. Mm -hmm. But the only one that might be an issue is when we go down to bring it to the jail. Okay, so the, that would be it. So the 1.82 mm -hmm. is that that's going to that's going to take the lemon bill <laughs> and the line to the jail. Um, yeah, because I, I figured, and that's just a rough, I mean, I'm not an engineer. I just no, put I just some figures out point. there because we had said they wanted to design it, uh, even when Mr. Grant was here. When Cedric was here, it was not included in the original design, and he said it would be $60,000 to bring, actually take it and bring it and tie it into the jail. So I put 150 just roughly, but... We'd have to get some fine numbers there. Who was, who was, which, who's the last time we reviewed what PUC had? That to, and did staff review it? Uh, it was done by, at the time, all? it was by Mr. Turner. Mr. So Turner that's how was, far back this review yes, was under right. Mr. Turner. Uh -huh. And, you know, so everybody reviewed it, and, you know, there wasn't any gold plating or anything like no, that. No, so it was straight You could try to work on this budget, and O.J. probably got more background on it, so he'll probably it answer was, some of was, my questions. It was a simple application because they were putting lift stations. Uh, there was no plant being done. Um, 
uh, I'm talking like I know what I'm doing, but, yeah. it, you know, it, it was a simplified version of where we were going and just running the line. It was trunk line, tie-in, the left station. That's exactly it. No it treatment, was, it no was treatment not facility. A, yeah, treatment the, was going to be uh, routed to the city center. Right. Right. Thank you. Councilman Joseph. Martha, um, on the USDA uh, portion of it, um, once again, um, I, I understand we would have to put the application in November 15 of um, November 15 of next year. Um, what is the timeline to look at looking at USDA funding and how much can we get out of it for this project? Um. I can start today if President Martinez says go start exploring that. I mean, the USDA is such a time-intensive thing because we don't know whether you're going to get it or not. We talked and, about it before. And you have to do everything up front. Now, just like LCDBG, you have to have – they're expecting you to be shovel-ready. They want you to have your – you pay for the engineering. That's what we have already. And we've already paid for that. Okay. And we have to pay for the application. At that time, Mr. Roberto Macedo was the one that was doing these mm -hmm. funding, these grants. Okay. He was in so the in-house. And he did everything um, application-wise, did the survey, and put the whole thing together. So it was a complete package. It's just that we didn't, we did, it just was, we couldn't get it within ballpark. Okay. Uh, so we'd have to start from scratch about surveying. Uh, I'm sure there's been some changes there. Maybe the, I think we had, I looked up, um, Councilman Joe, there was an estimated 97 families in that little area. And of that, 81. 100. 81. Plus. Huh? 104 plus. That's Lemonville? That's just Lemonville. That's just okay. Lemonville. Well, at the time they did this, maybe there's been some change. And 81 of the those families or homes were eligible. So we were looking at, at the time, 324 uh, people. Mm -hmm. That's what that was, was area was going to serve when you took the families and included that. Um, so I know that's changed, so we'd have to go back and redo, you know, recertify these and... Uh, and, you know. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's just increasing. It's 800 to a million. But the other question was, have uh, Martha or administration, I know Mr. Uh, Dawson is also working and aware of what is coming up in that area. Yes. And how does those numbers will affect what they're doing, what they're planning to do, and uh, how can we, I know that, that uh, the line from Lemonville to that space right there now is look like it may be to being taken up. And look at all those scenarios and then uh, possibilities uh, shortening that distance with the commercial that is coming in that area that will uh, ease some of that cost. Mm -hmm. um, you have to Mr. Dawson, have you worked with Ms. Martha on this or? Any yeah. aware of any of this? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it. We, I, in fact, last year, and I met with PEC, and they talked about they even updated that number. So I think they, they looked at the old numbers and then updated that numbers, which is exactly what Ms. Collins has said. And we're all looking at everything in that area, the growth, the potential growth, and um, those possibilities, and we're making a review. In fact, I'll be meeting with some of my guys right after this to talk about it. But we are looking at all of the aspects of um, what's coming up in the area, both in water and sewer, and see, you know, what could be the best possible solution. Okay. Councilman Joseph, you know that both of these grants are for low to moderate income to qualify. And Lemonville, Lemonville is the Lemonville lowest. does that, but when you start extending it down to something else, then you, I want you to, we can qualify for that section there. When you start moving. And, the, the and that's why. And go in this direction. I understand that, Ms. Martha. Okay. I understand that. The okay. only thing is I'm trying to shorten the distance. I have a very low, mod, real low income area that mm -hmm. is, is eligible for everything. That's the correct. problem is when I get from that low area to that distant okay. area, is a different cost. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're looking at commercial that can possibly take up that cost. 
and that way we can work with the low model income community. You'd want to keep it separate. Of course. And but so that's why I'm saying looking at the numbers and looking uh -huh. at the development in that area sure. and saying what that cost is and how can mm -hmm. we let that cost go to commercial. Right. No, I, I understand. It was just that we can't mix them. I, I we, definitely I, understand that. I, okay. I, I've been through this process before. I know you have. You, you uh, probably right. could teach the class on it. But so. And that's the only thing is, I, I just see that your portion of the grant of it looking this way, and from a utility point of, on the uh, administration side, utility department, mm -hmm. they are already in, in, in a process of looking at a couple of things. I think if we look at them and put some numbers together, I think we can make this happen. With, the, with USDA funding right. and mm -hmm. the uh, LCDBG grant. Ms. Mark, mm -hmm. we'll make sure I understand a couple of things. Now, with the the CDBG money, the grant potential or the money or the, the money from the grant potentially is not going to go up. It's going to stay at the 800000 Yes, sir. It's not going to go anywhere. That's it. Yep. What's the potential revenue from the USDA? Uh, the I think it's potential? a, I'm thinking it's a 95.5 match on the USDA funds. I'm not sure on the maximum of what you could to do on that, but it would possibly be more than the than the LCDBG. So, you you know which one are can you, you want? Can you to piggyback do? the two? Well, you we can we can partner with them to see whatever one doesn't pick up, and that's what we intended to do on the other one. That what? is the eight when we had the six hundred thousand. Whatever the 600000 didn't cover, USDA would, would do the difference. Right. And so what we'll have to do is a dual but that, stream. But, the time but, that money, but that money has to be committed in the budget before USDA, before you apply for it? Is that, well, the other, is that one of the other issues I heard? They come back with pre. They come back with, with the you questionnaire. You have to have where you're getting the money from and the total cost of the project or estimated. Right, USDA. 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 That's the same thing now. Well, I'm right. with the lady last week. Actually. I had to uh -huh. sign, a, sign a paper about HDUD one because they wanted to make sure that we were covering the cost over there because they're worried about their loans that they have outstanding. And the other thing is that they offered more money, but uh, uh, for another project, but at 3.5 percent interest. And uh, I think you can uh, figure that out. That's that's pretty steep, but they said they had plenty of money coming. That uh, if you wanted to borrow something at three and a half percent, they'd be happy to give you as much as you want. Yeah, and that's if you got a qualifying deal, it's got to be right. for for area with fifty thousand or less, uh, and you know right. it goes on right. down and down and down. They go by numbers, population. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's there's two programs that they they have a grant program and they have a loan program. We always said loans were out, we only want to do the grant. That's grant seventy five twenty five. Seventy five twenty five, okay. So and I, and I, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. I, I I guess I'm 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 looking at the possibility, all possibility with the information coming with some real numbers <clears throat> to do the research on it, do the study on it, to come back with some numbers. And then you can I, I mean I can well inform the community of uh, here's the situation if you want sewage, here's all your options. Right now, our option is basically saying there's no funding and we really don't have an answer for you besides no funding. I just wish I would like to have those answers where we can make a decision and put, present it to the public if they want to pay a 30 or a 50 or a 60 dollar sewage bill. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all. So if they say no, it's their option. Not like the last time, we just said there was, we could not do it in a time frame and we turned the money back, you know? There was no choice. Well, at the time, you're right, because we, no we got the money, we set on the money, and then we tried to go to USDA, and that time frame, that was overlapping. So three years we had the funding. The, we didn't the do state, anything with it. Right. Basically. And I mean, so this did. time, I'm saying let's get ahead of the ball game. Okay. 
and do all the research so we'll know what we can do. Okay. We can start that, Ms. President, yep. if you want to direct us to do that. Councilman mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you, Parish President, because we really need to narrow down what's, where's our low-income district, what's the numbers in there, and what that qualifies for. And after we leave out of there with a pipe, it's outside of that money, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what all commercial that's coming over there that, that we, we see to pay money back or back basically tie into, but... Uh, with the, with the other loans, it, it's uh, with the rural loan. That's uh, that's not a good dollar right now. I mean, I don't I, see. I, but I can't I, say right now, Van. <clears throat> I would and, rather and, wait uh, and tell you so, uh, do some but, work with the, but the to, utilities and, and get you a good number. We yeah, but to give that. to give uh, Councilman Gels or something to go back to uh -huh. to his folks with is I think that the administration uh, that y'all you know the utility department can come up with a, a basic dollar figure, what they're looking at, what's, what's going to be your monthly bill I once we hook on to it, mm -hmm. and that, that's going to be a deciding factor. They will pay for the hookup, which yes. means that we're, the power, this, this grant pays yes. for them to be hooked up. But once they're hooked up, if they don't qualify, they have to pay that, and then they start paying the monthly bill. Uh, so you know we're, we're already working on a... A fee schedule? Yeah. Mr. Dawson, I just, for utilities? So. I, I just want a clarification for what you just said. So, in mm -hmm. other words, the low income qualifies to where they don't have to pay for the hookup. That's correct. And they're not going to have to pay a monthly bill? Yes, they will have to pay a monthly okay, bill. Okay, because your verbiage you just had. <laughs> okay. You know, maybe you was kind of talking about a couple of things. I want to make sure, you know. Um, let me read. Day. They will have to pay the monthly bill at whatever the parish is right. set, no matter That's, what. No matter what. There's no option. Okay. We, they have to hook up to the parish I mean, I think we've, we, we've had studies in, you know, different parts, Darrell, mm -hmm. you know, Prairieville area. You know, we ran through this, this committee a lot in the last two years, and we kind of got a good idea what somebody's going to have to pay for a monthly bill for utilities. And it, it, it's probably not going to be that much difference from one area to the other, all right? Because that has the monthly bill has nothing to do with the income, right? Right? No, sir. Okay, I just want to make that clear. It you know, has so. nothing to do with this side. All right. The, Thank the you, ma'am. Monthly bill is, is that's, something. That's else. a very important part that we right. need to we need to have those numbers and those folks need to be aware of that because in the end of the day, if they can't afford that on a monthly basis, then you know. We probably shouldn't go forward this project. I mean, that's part of our problem. We in subsidizing right. things and want to help as many people as we can, but we got to be able to pay our bills at the end of the day. I, I personally don't want to get trapped into a, a good grant or a good loan or something that's going to let us build something, not maintain it, and 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 not and not keep up with it. But we're currently, you know, we got to have that payback we're somehow currently doing to that support right that now. budget. That's correct. With the Dyer Hillaryville with the CDBG store. Correct. That yes. is all going in. That's it right. will be done. They have to hook up. Those that qualify, we'll, we'll hook them up. Those that don't, they have to pay. And then there is a monthly fee associated with that. For everybody. For everybody. In, in that area. And correct. Correct. No one is debating that. It's just the only thing is just looking at where's the funding, where's the numbers, mm -hmm. and what option does we have. We have looked at the situation and evaluated properly to give the, the public the proper information. Yeah, that's Inform them. That's all. Right. That's Mr. Dawson. Yeah, we, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, um, in fact, um, the utility department have been meeting and talking with the engineer because they're still going through their design phases. And, some of the conversation we had is that they weren't sure exactly what was going to be there. You know, there's some expansion, some other possibilities of having other businesses and maybe some other type of residential development coming in. So 
we're working out all the numbers with the engineer because the entity has the engineer that's going through the design phases, so we're pulling all those numbers together. Once we get them together, we're going to look at the revenue that could be generated by the parish from the customer that's there, including any potential customer that could brought in, be brought in through water or wastewater, and then look at what the cost of the project that it's going to take to do it. We're going to maximize any money that we can get from the developers through even our ordinances to say that some developers, there's a certain fee that you have to pay for it for sewer and ordinance now. We're going to enforce that so there's a detailed financial analysis so that everyone is clear of what uh, what they're looking at. So. Well, probably, well, where are we now? I mean, Brian, you know where we are right now? I think one of the main things we're wait, working with now is the developer on those demands and needs. We have the ordinance numbers. We know the numbers of houses that are out there. Um, we, we have the estimates that came in with the construction costs with the bids for this project. Uh, so we, we kind of need what, to know what demands and what expansions that the developer is going to do, what they're willing to tell us what or work with us on. And that's kind of the sticking point where we're at at the moment. You know, we have all the numbers. Without that, uh, that, that uh, yeah, we're kind of waiting on the developer to make those decisions to see what we can do to, to, to maximize the use of all fund, fundage. Um, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So all the other numbers are kind of set uh, already. We just waiting for that direction. Okay. Then, Ms. Ms. Chairman, I'll just keep it on the agenda so we can keep it an open discussion to keep us updated, hopefully. That, you know, that's all I'm, I'm requesting. Not the information is good. I so, mean, Ken, about, uh, or Brian, about how long do we think we're going to, how much more time do we need to get this information together to bring back, whether it's a go or a no-go kind of? situation and I mean I won't I don't want to put you down say next month it's gonna happen and you know some numbers out there just no, a rough estimate 60 90 days yeah no I no, I probably but I would keep it on the agenda like Councilman Joseph said so we okay. can we can update it as we go forward if we get any more information from the developer he may or may not tell us everything he wants to tell us I think that's kind of the, the what we're dealing with but I can at least put together numbers that we have already and lay that out in a format that's hopefully easily read so that we can start working from that, okay. from that at the next meeting. All right, thank you. Ms. Carla, would you make that happen, please? All righty. Uh, moving on to agenda item number eight, discussion on results of the Engineering Installation Committee for request of qualifications titled Project and Construction Management of Modified P16A Area. Uh, myself and Mr. Dawson. The first thing I'd like to do is uh, start out and thank all the companies that participated and responded to the RFQ. Uh, we've got a lot of good information in. I'd also like to uh, congratulate and thank President Martinez and Mr. Dawson for putting together, I would argue, the best selection committee that we've had since we put this process in place. Uh, we had a large qualified uh, group of people, or, or a number of five or six people, uh, all engineering uh, types in one shape or form as well as uh, we were finally able to uh, get a professor from Southern to come in and help us out like we originally tried to uh, plan for with our engineering selection committee. So with that being said, I think we had uh, the best qualified group of folks evaluating this thing, and I would like to personally at this time uh, thank them for their time and efforts put forth in it. As I know it was a, a, a large task. We had uh, eight, if I remember correctly, uh, responses. Nine. Nine. Nine responses to the uh, to the RFQ, uh, so it was a, a large amount of data to go through. Uh, so with that being said, Mr. Dawson, if you would uh, give us a recap of uh, the results of that. Uh, yes, sir. You have the memorandum in, in front of you, and to echo what you said, we do appreciate all the efforts. Uh, the chairman of the engineering department, Southern University, uh, volunteered his time and said he's willing to do so in the future as well. Uh, if you, you look at the, the memorandum that you have as part of your package, it talks about who all the companies we received the proposals from. Um, in that, um, GSA um, had 437 as the highest score, CSRS was 411, Figma Consultant was the third at um, 385. Um, one thing the packages definitely indicated, uh, there were significant timelines put in these packages, details of how how things were going to get done, and um, I think that aided in the review process because, as all of you know, in the utility committee, our goal was to make sure that that um, 
this process is this process moves very fast because we have to have all of those all that done so that we move forward further with the application, you know, for the state revolving uh, fund uh, on loan. Uh, just to give you just uh, another aspect of this, a portion of the scope it says to assist with the uh, preliminary engineering report and the environmental impact document. Um, we've already received our preliminary um, preliminary engineering report because uh, what we did and President Martinez approved us going forth and actually getting the company that actually did the overall facility plan to start that process. So we're in a process now of reviewing it from a staff and administration standpoint as we move forward. So we are moving things forward very quickly, and I think that we are on a timeline that could get this process done as fast as possible. All right. Um, as we talked last month uh, before we set this meeting, uh, purview of this committee, whether they uh, want to make a recommendation to the full council, we do have a special, just as an announcement, we do have a special council meeting scheduled for Wednesday night, 6 p.m. here, to uh, make a call on this, as Mr. Dawson alluded to, and we've had talked about this in the past. This is because of the time frame that we set for ourselves. Uh, we're being aggressive and do not want to be the hold up in any of this stuff at all, and so uh, we'll move forward there. Uh, Mr. Sadler. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to join um, both Benny and Ken in thanking our, our professional engineers, Bob, Mike, Dewey, Jason, and Ken himself. Uh, and particularly, it's been mentioned that, and I want, I want to reiterate that point, it's very important that we had an outsider, not just people inside of the parish that we gainfully employed, but the professor from, um, engineering professor from Southern University. And in that regard, I'd like to also commend uh, President Tommy Morton as um, uh, in the past, uh, everyone I think knows that I was a little concerned about the makeup of these particular committees when maybe we could be using people from the university. I know that's a difficult task, um, as President Martin has said in the past, because sometimes these guys don't want to serve. So I'm pleased to see, though, that this time he was able to get that gentleman to come on board and, and equally pleased uh, going forward because following this, we're going to have RFPs and so forth. I'm glad that this guy's agreed to uh, serve again. Also, uh, Chairman Johnson just mentioned uh, a moment ago um, that he thought it was the best makeup ever of an engineering selection committee, and I just want everybody to know, uh, Benny, I, I concur um, because of the reasons I just gave. I mean, nothing against the attorneys or anything else or other folks that have been served in these committees in the past, but plumbers plumb, I guess, dentists drill your teeth, engineers do what engineers do. That said, it, it sort of made my uh, job easy, and I'm for a recommendation, and, and when I'm finished, I'm going to make a motion in that regard to the full council so that um, we would have then, I think, the weight of both the um, Engineering Selection Committee and this um, subcommittee of the full council, the uh, Utilities Committee. Uh, I have in the past, and so I did it again. Um, I know a lot of people might think this is necessary. In this case, it's not going to cause any problems. Run a complete statistical analysis on the nine different engineering forms, uh, firms pardon me, who applied for the RFQs. Uh, and the uh, five different engineer scores that I mentioned a minute ago when I was thanking them. Uh, that resulted in a one-way analysis of variance, and what I did to separate after the ANOVA um, mean scores of these individuals, Ken, I didn't use total points like you, but I averaged it over the, the five scores. I did all possible pairwise comparisons using a two keys test. And while that may not be meaningful, I think what's important to note statistically for those who are not adept in that science uh, this can be done at both a 95 and a 99 percent um, certainty level. And what I found was this, that again, uh, there were some tyings at the top end, not so much at the bottom end, but uh, GSA, CSRS has already been mentioned, and Sigma as the top three by um, one way ANOVA that was verified in two keys pairwise mean comparisons. However, this time, unlike last time where we had like, everybody remembers a point or so separating the top one and uh, top two and actually I think three firms. Um, GSA had the highest numerical mean score by a full 5.2 points more than um, CSRS in second place. And that's, that's on average, so it's important to note that I didn't use total points, I used an average. That's quite a lot. As an old college professor, sometimes seven points can be the difference between an A and a B grade, quite frankly. Uh, GSA was also the top ranked firm. This would be out of all nine again by four of the five engineers who took a look at the various dossiers. And in fact, the fifth engineer who uh, placed GSA second did so only by a one point, one point difference 
uh, between them and CSRS. Uh, some of the pairwise, uh, pairwise comparisons also fell more favorably on GSA than CSRS, for example. GSA was statistically superior to BKI at a 99% confidence interval. Uh, CS, CS, CSRS was also uh, better than that firm, but only at a 95% confidence interval. GSA outscored SJB, according to our engineers, um, excuse me, um, um, Stewart Consultant, the third place by 99% uh, confidence. CSRS did so by 95. Uh, and while CSRS was not considered different statistically from SJB, GSA also uh, statistically separated themselves from SJB. So when you add all this together, and, and let me not also say I painstakingly, as I'm sure every member of this committee did, read each and every one of these nine proposals. Uh, I concur with um, the engineers. I believe GSA clearly has the best proposal here. Uh, I will note things like their intimacy in terms of knowledge of what's going on in the modified P16 area, um, and some of the other things mentioned by other people. Um, probably resulted in them having a little bit of a leg up on some of these companies. I don't want any of these other companies, however, to feel like they were also ran in any way because they're not. Um, lots of folks, again, like last time, I think are qualified to do this. I just believe that GSA has um, the, the wherewithal um, and, and, and some of the other things that they talked about in their proposal to get this done. For example, right-of-way acquisition, et cetera, et cetera, that um, I'm going to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to recommend to the full council that um, we go forward with the um, um, GSA. I have a motion to go forward or recommend to the full council. Uh, second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Councilman Joseph. Any other discussion? Yes. Councilman Kluwak. Hey, I once again, I want to thank the administration and all the staff for all the work y'all put into it. Uh, still think the timelines are tight. Okay, it don't matter who's doing it. I thought the initial timelines were tight. I know we got, we, you know, I'm all, I'm all good about a timeline, but uh, so you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of work on everybody's part to, to get those and, and the things that continually come back to us through committee and through the council as we go through our uh, our procedures as uh, on the path forward. Going to have to. That would be pretty good and pass through pretty quick to, to make things happen in a timely basis. And I think the parish president could probably expand on that, is that there's a lot of pressure put on the people that's going to be working with us, both here for the program management and for the projects down the road in the design and construction. And I still think uh, I'm hoping we're going to we're going to do good with acquisition, you know. And, uh, that's still in the back of my mind, and it's just, just one of the things that can block the road down, down there and hold a project up. Because with about 20, a better percent, you know, we just got through talking about your project across the river that every time you go back and look at it, you can add another half a million on it, you know. And it, it just grows, and it's, you know, and you want to go back and ask people that's designing it, are you crazy, you know, but no, they're not crazy. That's what's, that's the change. It's, it's moving. So. Once again, I want to stress the timeline. It's going to take the same team to continue to work together to do this. And I appreciate appreciate your effort. Appreciate y'all stepping up to the bat on this. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Yes, I just want to uh, elaborate with uh, Councilman Fluor. And I, I, Benny, and I know what we're going to have is a lot of special meeting because things going to come up, and the public needs to know this changed the whole dynamic of how we meet. I mean, things going to come up, and we can probably see the utility district meeting more often than you've ever seen before because one week from the next week, mm -hmm. timeline going to come up, and they're going to be, yes, we need it. We need approval. We need approval. So I just want to make the public aware of timeline and meeting with the uh, utility is going to be a whole lot more in the future. So. I thought, can I have another second? Right. Uh, I just want to throw the emphasis on the credibility of the information that's going to come to us in a quick moment, okay, to where we can't look at it and say, I've never seen this before. We can't look at it and say, you know, well, what about this? What about that? You know, good, clean information coming forward with recommendations from the administration and staff, you know, and, and whomever turns out to be our project manager and support. Thank you. 
Yeah. Also, and, and me and President Martin as well as Mr. Dawson have talked about this in the past. I mean, we we want to do this as expeditiously as possible, but we don't want to do it at the cost of accuracy. Uh, can, I think everyone here can attest to the fact that one of the things we keep reiterating over and over again is that we've got one shot at this to gain the people's trust and do what needs to be done, and it has to be done right the first time, and there will be no excuses. Uh, this is the difference between whether or not this project goes beyond this or whether it stops right here, and we all understand the ramifications of that, and that's one of the things that uh, I emphasize to uh, everybody I get in touch with and talk about sewer is that, you know, it's uh, while we, we have a, a time crunch, or we're putting ourselves with a very aggressive time schedule. We don't want to sacrifice accuracy, and we don't want to sacrifice the uh, doing this the right way. It's not about just getting it done to get it done. It's about getting it done to get it done right. Uh, and can't emphasize that enough. It's the importance of uh, the selection of the full council is very important uh, in, in making sure that, you know, we get this right the first time, and, and as Councilman Jones and Councilman Clue I alluded to, yes, we will have, I'm sure, several meetings, uh, more than just once a month, to get this stuff done where we need to from a council perspective. Uh, we will work very closely with the administration to make sure that we get the information out as timely as we can. I can guarantee you from my part, uh, you're going to be probably hearing from me more than you want to be hearing from me. Uh, but uh, we are going to uh, do what we can to, to, to try to make sure that everybody has the information they can and understand that this is not about the uh, he said, she said kind of thing. It's about making sure that we get, we hold true to our timeline that we set for ourselves. And uh, we're all going to need to cooperate to get that done. Uh, and so it's about teamwork. It's about understanding what everybody's roles are and playing those roles out uh, starting after Wednesday. Uh, we'll be starting with the contract negotiation and uh, doing that in a timely fashion to make sure that we can get uh, this team put in place and get them to start working because there's a lot of different things that have to take place pretty quickly as far as my hydraulic modeling and all this other kind of stuff uh, to do some of the things that we've talked about in the past of uh, where we can design and build it today to meet the needs of the future, we definitely want to take advantage of that. And one of the ways we're going to be able to figure out whether we can or not is through our hydraulic modeling. That will save us money down the line to where we don't have to go in and, and replace new pipe with bigger pipe because we're adding on to the system and the new pipe or the pipe that's existing can't handle the flows. Uh, like we've talked in the past, you can you can't put the pipe needed for 20 years down the road because it's not going to hydraulically work today. So you got to put the pipe in that works today and then come back 20 years from now and, <laughs> and whatever that system needs to be upgraded. So but we want to try to take advantage where we can financially as well as from a standpoint of view of uh, what we can do to save time and money later on in this project. Because, uh, again, the, the whole goal with this is not just this one area. It's the east side of the parish as much as financially and feasibly possible to, uh, to put sewer for. So with that, uh, and I further ado, is there any other discussion? Any opposition to that motion? Hearing none, that motion passes and will be sent on to the full council for Wednesday night's meeting. Um, uh, that being said, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Sandler, second by Councilman Fluot. We are adjourned. Thank you.